Hello my dear friends and welcome to our today's class. It's our first lesson on the fourth topic of Form 3 work which is called Work, Energy, Power and Machines. As usual, let me comment by giving you the quote of the day which states that one small positive thought in the morning can change your whole day. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So let's start by defining what we mean by energy and stating its SI unit. So energy is just the ability to do work. The SI unit for energy is the joules, which is denoted by capital J. Now we have a variety of sources of energy. The first one is what we call the sun. So the sun is the main source of energy on the earth. It produces both heat and light energy. Now, light from the sun is used by the eye to see. Um, the same light can also be uh, can also enable plants to manufacture their food through a process called photosynthesis. Radiation from the sun also makes it possible to generate heat and electrical energy from the solar panels. The second source of energy is what we call wind, and wind refers to the moving air. Thus, it possesses the kinetic energy, that is energy in motion. So this kinetic energy uh, from the wind is used to rotate windmills for pumping water and the same wind energy can also be used to rotate windmills which can be connected to a conductor that is placed within a strong magnetic field uh, within a strong magnetic field. Now remember that when a conductor is rotated within a magnetic field an electromotive force in the, is induced in that particular conductor by the process called electromagnetic induction which we shall discuss in chapter 4 of form 4 work. Then the third source of energy is what we call uh, geothermal energy. Uh, so when underground water is exposed to the to immense heat uh, that is uh, when underground water is exposed to the immense heat inside the earth's crust the water boils and turns into steam which rapidly flows out of the earth surface under very high pressure and with a lot of kinetic energy. So this kinetic energy is used to turn the turbines in a geothermal power station. So these turbines in turn rotate conductors within a magnetic field hence generating electricity by the same process of electromagnetic induction which, are, which we shall discuss in form 4. Then the fourth source of energy is what we call the high dams and waterfalls whereby water in high dams contain potential energy that is the energy at rest. So as the water flows from the dams the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy that is energy in motion which is used to turn the turbines in hydraulic power stations to produce electricity by the same process of electromagnetic induction. Then the fifth source of energy is what we call the nuclear energy or atomic energy. Uh, so here uh, when the unstable nucleus of the atom is split through the reactions known as the nuclear fission, energy is released. We shall differentiate between nuclear fusion and nuclear fission under radioactivity. That is the last chapter in Form 4 work. So that is uh, when the unstable nucleus of an atom is split through reactions known as the nuclear fission, energy is released. So this energy is used to heat water to produce steam at very high pressure. So the steam is then used to drive the turbine so as to produce uh, electricity by the same process of electromagnetic induction. Then our second last source of energy is what we call the oceans whereby Tides and waves in oceans possess kinetic energy, that is energy in motion, which is used to turn the turbines. So as, uh, as the turbines are turned, they are connected in such a way that as the turbines turn, they also rotate a conductor within a magnetic field. Then uh, from electromagnetic induction process, we shall see that whenever a conductor is rotated within a magnetic field, an electromotive is induced, hence electricity is produced. Then our last source of energy is what we call the fuels. So fuels are simply substances which when burned they produce energy. For example we have the wood, we have the charcoal, we have petroleum, coal and even the 
natural gases. So basically, those are the main sources of energy. Then source of energy can also be categorized into renewable and non-renewable sources. So renewable sources of energy are the source of energy which can be recycled or reused without getting exhausted or depleted. Examples of renewable sources of energy include we have the solar energy, uh, geothermal energy, the wave energy or the tidal energy, and also the windmills or the uh, aero generator. So remember, the renewable sources of energy are usually the natural sources of energy. That's why they cannot be depleted. For example, the sun. The sun will never get depleted because it is naturally available. You also have the geothermal energy, the wave or the tidal energy because water is also natural. We also have the windmills which uh, relies heavily on moving air or that is the wind which is also natural. So basically renewable sources of energy, uh, most of them are usually the natural sources of energy. The other category is the non-renewable energy sources which refers to the source of energy which once used can be that is cannot be retrieved or you cannot reuse them once they have been depleted examples of non-renewable sources of energy include the firewood we have the charcoal coal petroleum biogas and also the nuclear energy that is once you have used them uh, they get depleted or exhausted and therefore they can never be reused next we look at uh, the forms of energy so basically we have uh, five main forms of energy the first form of energy is what we call uh, the chemical energy so chemical energy this is a form of energy that is this form of energy is contained in substances and can be uh, that is substances that can be converted to heat by the process of oxidation so, so that uh, such that the process of oxidation simply refers to the process of burning a substance and also under this chemical energy, that is a uh, chemical energy, is also found in uh, foods, oils, charcoal, coal, uh, firewood, and also biogas. The second source or the second form of energy is what we call the mechanical energy. And we have two main categories, that is the potential energy and kinetic energy. Remember, kinetic potential energy is contained in substances which are at rest at some height from the ground then kinetic energy is simply energy possessed by bodies which are in motion so uh, mechanical energy there are two types we have uh, namely we have the potential and kinetic energy uh, and remember that a body possesses potential energy due to its relative position or state that is from the ground so a body at a given height from the ground has a gravitational potential energy while a stretched or a compressed spring possesses what we call the elastic potential energy. So a body in motion possesses what we call kinetic energy. Examples, we have the running water, we have the wind, we have a moving bullet, a car in motion or a person uh, running. All these particular bodies, they contain what we call energy in motion or the uh, kinetic energy. The third type of energy is what we call, that is the type, the third form of energy is what we call heat energy. And heat is just a form of energy that flows uh, from one region to another due to the temperature difference. Remember, if you have two regions whereby one region maybe has a temperature of 20 uh, degrees Celsius, then the other region has a temperature of 10 degrees Celsius, then heat will flow from a region of high temperature, that is from 20 degrees Celsius, to a region of low temperature of 10 degrees Celsius. And whenever the temperature is the same at two points, then it means there, there won't be heat energy flow. So heat energy uh, is a form of energy that can only flow from one region to another because of a temperature difference. Then heat energy is produced by burning fuels, electrical current. It can also be produced uh, by radiations from the sun and also friction among other sources then our second last source of energy is what we call uh, the wave energy which refers to it has a variety of forms uh, so wave energy uh, it has that is the forms of wave energy include we have light we can also have sound wave we can also have the tidal waves 
So wave energy can be produced by vibrating objects or particles. So when a wire is plucked, it vibrates and sends energy through the, the air, that is to the ear of the listener. So the form of energy that reaches the ear uh, is called sound energy. We can also have light wave, which is uh, light is just energy in form of waves that can be detected by the ear and converted into other forms. We also have in photocells, for example, uh, a metal surface uh, is irradiated with light so that electrons are emitted and hence the current flows. Light energy is also used by plants in the process of photosynthesis. Then our last type of, uh, our last um, form of energy is what we call electrical energy. That is the electrical energy which refers to uh, a form of energy. That is this form of energy is usually obtained through conversion of other forms of energy using the generators. For example, kinetic energy of water that is in uh, waterfalls uh, is converted to electrical energy in hydroelectric power stations. Also, in geothermal stations, kinetic energy of steam is converted to electrical energy. So in electric cells and also batteries, chemical energy is converted to electrical energy. So in short, electrical uh, energy is a form of energy which is usually obtained through conversion of other forms of energy energy using the generators so those are the five types or the five forms of energy so we've come to the end of our class today but we need to discuss the quote of the day the quote of the day stated that one small positive thought in the morning can change your whole day so the quote is reminding us uh, the importance of kicking off our day with optimi optimism positivity and gratitude the quote is also encouraging us to set good intentions at the beginning of each day so that our actions will be geared towards gratitude, kindness, and compassion. And lastly, recall that when our actions are based on good intentions, uh, then our souls will always have no regrets because something that you did with a good intention you cannot regret the consequences of such an action. Thank you very much for accompanying me until, until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you will get a notification. Also, if you know any student or anyone that you honestly think could benefit from this content, kindly, kindly refer them to kind tuition academy thank you very much for your continued support i'm receiving a lot of positive comments from you people i do not take it for granted i really appreciate so until next time this is kind tuition academy